Hi, I'm Didier Roche, and we are going to look together at our new Ubuntu Core 16 beta image. For more details on Ubuntu Core and what Snap and any, you know, like all Snap image are, I encourage you to go to snapcraft.io to have these details. We won't enter, you know, in, into the deep technical details one now. We just have a look at what you know this new beta image is, how it works, uh, and so on. And we will have further videos, you know, on more technical stuff. So we have a blog post on insights.ubuntu.com presenting this new Ubuntu Core 16 beta image. You have, you know, a list of all the new features and so on, and as well some instructions on how to download and install it. So let's, you know, like jump directly on the downloading links. And let's take the current image, which is the latest one, which has been tested and so on. You will see here that we have three images one now. At the time of the recording, we have a MD64, a X86, and a Raspberry Pi 2 image. More images are coming along, like a Raspberry Pi 3, and also, you know, like other chipsets. So let's take our MD64 image which is the beta 3 version of this image as well. And let's create a directory and start an unload. So the image is downloaded in a compressed version, which is approximately 370 megabytes. And we will then expand that image and extract it. This image is compatible with emulators. And so we will be able to run it, you know, in a KVM, which is a accelerated virtual machine, or we can directly install it, install it on an MD64 hardware. Now that our image is almost downloaded, we are going, you know, to be able to extract it. To do so, we can use some GUI tool or we can use some command line tool. Here, I'm going one of those command line tool, which is ExatCat. And as an argument, it's going to take, you know, the image name which is a compressed one. And I'm going to redirect std out to the same file, you know, without the extension. And so this is just going to extract the file and to, to, to put the, the bytes basically in the new file. The new file is like, a, you know, a fixed size image disk. So basically it will be a four gigabytes image. So ensure that, you know, you have enough space on your, on your image. This will enable you to install some snaps, to, to play with that image, uh, to have a lot of free space in that image itself. Of course, you know, on a real device, uh, the image uh, on first boot basically take the whole empty space that is available on the disk. So let's start our emulator right now. We are going to use KVM. You can use whatever emulator you want. Uh, KVM is quite handy because it's accelerated and as well, it's available through the command line. So KV KVM, let's give it 1.5 gigabytes of memory. And here, what is important is that we are going to redirect some ports. So I want to have access to that image uh, by SSH. SSH is listening on port 22, and I'm going to redirect that port to one of my ports of the, on the localhost. So minus ready, my TCP, and I'm going to redirect the port 20, 10,022, and I'm going to redirect it inside the VM to the port 22, which is a TCP one. I'm also going to uh, redirect another direct uh, to, to redirect another port, which is the port 42,000. And I'm going to redirect it as well on my host. This is a WebDM port. I'm going to show you a little bit later uh, what WebDM is and how it's working. Uh, so this port, you know, 4200 uh, is really important to, to be redirected if you want to play with that functionality on your host. And now I'm just, you know, going to put the uncompressed image name. And here we have Ubuntu Core Series 16 starting. So you will see that it's going to start, you know, quite quickly. And as part of the first boot experience, we see that systemd is starting. It's a complete systemd image uh, with a lot of functionality. So it's telling me to press enter to configure. So let's press enter. 
And now we have to create one account uh, on my machine. And this account is linked by default to, to our uh, own login service, which is login.putu.com. Uh, there are other ways to do. So I will accept the default. I won't set you know, any custom IPv4, IPv6 what. And it's asking me my Ubuntu SSO account. So I'm going to enter it. Here, remember that uh, the keyboard is a QWERTY keyboard, which is a little bit challenging for me as I have a French layout. <laughs> and um, this QWERTY keyboard with a US layout. Uh, so we know about that. We are going to work on, you know, be able to, to select the layout later. Then it, it's, not, it's not a big issue because uh, once, you know, you log in, we will use SSH and SSH will just forward the right configuration to the host. So we won't be impacted. It's just for, you know, this type your email address, which is a little bit annoying. So it's going to contact the store. It formed myself and it say, you know, now I can SSH, you know, uh, to my machine. So the machine is started. So it means that, you know, from, I even don't know, no need, you know, like that window anymore but I can directly SSH to it. So let's do it. So SSH, I say that I redirected the port 22 of my virtual machine to the port 10,000 or 22. And my user, which was created, has my, you know, nickname on Notepad, which is Ditrox. And this is localhost. Are you sure I want to continue? Yes, because I never connected. Now it's asking me for my best phrase. So it means that it was able basically, you know, to contact Launchpad and to get my SSH key, you know, uh, through our logging system. And here I am. I am, you know, inside the virtual machine. Uh, you can see that by default there is nothing uh, in the home directory. And it's a, we all, you know, Ubuntu box uh, with all, you know, like, the folders and all the all the features that you can expect from Ubuntu box, but it's even more than an Ubuntu box. It's a snappy system. So that means, for instance, that the whole system is read-only. This is one of the difference. So if I try to remove some library, let's take a victim uh, like uh, LG Linux .so, it's telling that it's a read-only system. Even if I run it as root. It can't remove it, contrary to a normal, you know, like uh, Linux box. So the whole system is read only. Everything is a snap, and so you can't basically, uh, uh, you you can't, you know, do anything with it. You see as well that uh, an update system, you know, has been pushed to my image. So it means that my image is going to reboot automatically. Um, if I don't do if I don't do anything, uh, so image auto updates uh, as part of the snap image, and you are always sure to be able, you know, to have the latest and greatest image here. So let's take this that update. Okay, so let's reboot immediately instead of you know letting it auto reboot. And let's have a look. So as you can see, the image reboots, and it reboots with a new core snap with a new, you know, like whole system. So basically, like, as you can see, in very few seconds compared to um, to APT, I get, you know, my new system downloaded and rebooted without having, you know, a lot of scripts running and so on. And this is whole transactional. And now I am on my new version. So as I told you, you know, this is a snappy system. So if I run the command snap list, I can list, you know, the snaps that I have here. And you can see that I don't have, you know, like uh, the 16.04, but I have 16.04.1. So it updated basically my core snap. So the core snap basically is the base system of the, uh, is the base version of the system. Uh, I have the PC. The PC one is what we call the gadget snap. So it's basically the configuration for a 9064 machine. We'll have other configuration for Raspberry Pi. Other configuration as well, you know, like for some devices where you want to enable people to install some snaps, but not others, uh, who have access to the device and so on. So basically, this is what is the gadget snap. PC kernel is the Linux kernel itself. So it's dedicated here to MD64. 
And we have SnapWeb, uh, which is the UI to install Snap, uh, which is what is listening to this port 4200. So here I can, you know, like see some of my snaps. So these are the four snaps that are installed by default. Uh, and now let's try to install my first snap on that system. So sudo snap find and let's try to find a hello snap. You can see we have some, you know, like hello world snap published by, you know, various developers. And I'm going to take the hello world one, which is at version 2.10 by canonical. So for that, I'm going to sudo snap install hello. It's downloading it. It's extracted the file, basically, by mounted it. There is no, you know, like uh, extra extraction as archive extraction. It's really just a by mount to ensure that you have a transactional system. And as well that you will never, you know, end up with some image which are, uh, which some files, you know, which are spreaded uh, on, uh, on your device. So let's look at it. Indeed, it's installed, as you can see here, with revision 20, and the version is 2.10. And this is the GNU Hello World. So if I type Hello, it's telling me Hello World. Quite unsurprising, right? Okay. There is as well multiple commands as part of this hello snap. Uh, so hello.hello .hello is this hello command. And we have as well hello.universe, which has a different argument and which is telling, you know, hello universe. I hear that we have a very, you know, like new awesome version of this hello snap in what we call the beta channel. So each snap have different channels. We have the stable channel, we have the candidate channel, we have the beta channel, and we have the edge channel. So it means that multiple versions of a snap can, can exist on each channel. And we can, as a user, select uh, one of these snap in one particular channel. So I'm going to say that I want to refresh my hello snap. And I want to take it. Refresh is to update it. Even if we auto update the snap, we still have this command to force an update. And I'm going to tell I want it from the beta channel. And if there is a new version of the hello snap in the beta channel, it's going to give it to me. And it did. There is one. As you can see, there is version 2.10.1. And if I snap list, you can see that I have installed it now and it's at revision 29. So let's see what's different. What, what is different? You can see that now what, when I tap hello, it doesn't tell me hello world, but hello snap other one. Awesome. <laughs> so you can see that the fact you have different channels, it enables you to track some snap on various, um, on, on various uh, states. Basically, you can have an edge channel, which is a daily build of a snap, and you can track it and get all the latest, you know, like automatic build passed by CI, version of any snap. Or you can say I'm more a beta user and I want to test the new functionality in advanced. Or you are part of a QA and you are on, you know, the candidate channel so that you can track a version just before it's out and you can, you know, test it. You can as well, you know, in the same way, uh, revert to another channel. So if I sudo snap revert hello, because the latest version, let's say, is completely broken, I wouldn't, I wasn't expected to have snap pada one. If I say, please revert me, it will revert me to version 2.10, which was, you know, the previous version. So as well, you know, I can update with confidence and I can then revert. It will revert the code itself, but as well the data associated with this code to ensure that the version is always with compatible data with that version, even if there has been some migration between versions and so on. So this is a very important and, you know, really cool feature of a snap system. Of course, you can, you know, like remove the snap with sudo snap remove hello. And then the snap is removed and nothing is, you know, staying on disk. We have a total insurance, contrary to a traditional packaging system, that no files stay on disk once, you know, it's removed. So last thing I want, you know, like, to look a little bit at WebDM. So if we go to localhost and if we go to the port I redirected at, which was this one, if I remember correctly, you can see here that we have what we call SnapWeb, which is listing, you know, the install snap. 
it's an easy way you know to be able to browse the store and to see the snaps that we'll be able to install to search for them to click on install to be able to install them and so on so the same thing that i have done uh, on the on my command line is as well available through this web interface and so i'm able to handle the, the machine and to be able to add you know like more snap on my machine and so on so here it is you know for the quick tour of this new ubuntu core 16 beta image again all the instructions on how to get started are available you know on this blog post on insights and if you want to join the Snap community, a lot of more information on how to use Snap, how to create Snap, and how to communicate with us, how to join the community, participate on the mailing list, on IRC channel, and so on, is available on snapcraft.io. So do not, you know, hesitate to look at, you know, that website to read through the doc. It has a lot of wonderful content. Thanks again for following, you know, this introduction. Hope to see you soon. Bye.